Here with me now is Mr. Sal Lizard. Sal Lizard has been seen in Hillbilly Bob Zombie, along with Creature from the Hillbilly Lagoon, Midnight Matinee Psycho, and the more popular The Box, starring Cameron Diaz. So, Sal, thank you for joining Darkest Goth. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, you've been a professional Santa for over 20 years. Oh, yeah. Going and, on 25. Okay, 25 years. And you've also authored the book, Being Santa Claus. Being Santa Claus, yep. There it is right there. Uh, it's a book about, uh, basically, my 20-plus years experience as a real bearded Santa. Okay. So... After being Santa for so long, how did you come up with the Vampire Santa persona? Well, I've been a Santa, like I said, for over 20 years, 25 now. And uh, I was in the IT business, but then with the big dot-com bubble burst, uh, I lost my job, and I had to reinvent myself, and so I decided to become an actor. I was told I was too old, too fat, and too ugly to be an actor, but I persevered, and by George, it's been 15 years now, and I've been in about 40 films altogether. Okay. Mostly uh, independent horror films. All right. So come the holiday season, when you're a full-time Santa Claus, does it become hard or difficult to balance out being Santa and an actor? No, no. As a matter of fact, I think that the two complement each other well. Uh, you know... To me, the being an actor really helps when children come up and, and they ask me questions. It seems like it really helped me hone my improv skills. Now, on the other hand, when people ask me, they go, uh, you know, how is it that you became such a good actor? Did you go to school? And I go, no, no. For, for years, I've been trying to convince the world's toughest crowd that I'm the real Santa. And that's a pretty tough, pro uh, order, tall order there. Mm -hmm. So I like tongue twisted around my fang. <laughs> So, you already have children that are afraid of Santa, so does the vampire Santa frighten them even more? Actually, it seems like a lot of children that are afraid of Santa like the vampire Santa. I I'm going to tell you a, a real quick thing. I had to separate on my table, I have pictures of myself. I have pictures of myself as Santa, and I have pictures of myself as a vampire Santa. I used to have the two of them together, and parents would bring their kids up, and they would show them the Santa pictures, and the children would focus on the vampire Santa. So when the parents would say, you want an autograph, they'd say, yeah, and they'd try to get them by a Santa picture, but the children would always ask for the vampire Santa. Okay. Now, I uh, think the Trekkers would be interested in knowing that you were the commander of the Starfleet. Yes, yeah, Starfleet, the International Star Trek Fan Association, Inc. What happened was uh, I was elected by the membership to the position of Commander Starfleet. So I hold the rank, the fictional rank, of Fleet Admiral. Okay. Did that for three years. All right, and I think for our gothic audience, they would like to know about you being an autopsy assistant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and I know you told me the story a couple times, so tell our audience the very humorous story about what happened on Halloween. Oh, okay. It was Halloween, and yes, I was an autopsy assistant working at this hospital. Well, I decided to dress up as the Grim Reaper. And even back then, whenever I got into character, I would try my best to be as authentic as possible. So I shaved off my beard, I wore a skinhead cap, and I actually had the teeth glued to the outside of my lips so that when I talked, the teeth moved. I, I borrowed a robe, a monk's robe, and I had this huge scythe that I had gotten. And I go to this hospital where I was working at, and I stopped and visited with the receptionist, and she goes, oh my gosh. She goes, Mac is on tonight and there's been a death up on the sixth floor. That meant that Mac would have to go up and pick up the body and take it down to the morgue. And dead bodies in the morgue kind of spooked Mac. And so I knew this, so I go down to the morgue, I unlock the door, I go in, and I sit on the autopsy table with the lights out. So after a while, I hear the key in the door, the door opens up, Mac flips on the lights as he's pushing in this body, and I jump off the table and said, I've been waiting for you. Is that uh, you know? Is that one for me? And uh, or actually, something similar to that. And uh, Mac turned around and fled, and actually fled from the hospital, and never came back. They mailed him his check because he wouldn't come pick it up, and he mailed them the keys because he wasn't going to come and drop them off. I felt really bad, especially since I actually had to work that night to finish out Mac's shift. Wow. So. You know, knowing all this stuff about you, all I can imagine is a Santa Claus 
with vulcaneers and vampire fangs examining a dead body. An interesting image, I'll tell you. I, uh, I can see myself in that position. <laughs> All right. Well, Sal, thank you very much for your time. And make sure everybody to check out The Wacky World of Sal Lizard on Wednesday nights. And uh, you can get to it through his Facebook page. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. Uh, yep. And uh, check out my radio station, uh, Slurp247.net. And also uh, feel free to check out ActorSal.com and you can see what conventions I'm going to be at, that sort of thing. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you. And... Remember, boys and girls, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So you better sleep with a wooden stake. <laughs> That's a great line there. Yeah. I got to tell you, I always tell the girls, be good for goodness sake. And if you can't be good, call me.